Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Curtain Theater's production of Macbeth. <laughs> Sorry, uh, Twelfth Night by William Shakespeare. Uh, we missed you last year because of the pandemic, and we're so very excited to be performing for you today. All right, can you hear me in the back okay? We have a great audience today. <laughs> So each half is about an hour and five minutes long with a 20 minute intermission, which you'll need because the trip to the bathroom is very long. So during intermission, if you need to use the restroom, follow the path, go across the street and the restrooms are next to the playground. If you get lost, concessions can help you. In pandemic, we've made a lot of adjustments. Now the actors will not be wearing masks, but we're all fully vaccinated. So is the band, so is the crew. We have dropped the, taken the first two rows of seats out of thereabouts, so we keep more distance. And unlike our usual performances, we, you will not see actors coming amongst you stealing food and other fun <laughs> stuff. Um, we will not be doing that at all, okay? So that's there. Now you will notice that there's signs up at the top. The park requires people to wear masks if they're within six feet of others walking around. So please, let's keep everybody safe. The play is set in 1890s Nova Scotia, Canada, which means no, no cell phones. <laughs> so please take this moment to silence your cell phone, turn your cell phone off, make sure your watches aren't beeping during the performance, and also please no flash photography. And finally, I am supposed to tell you where the emergency exits are, but since it's a park, go where you like. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we hope you enjoy the show. Let's go! of it that surfeiting the appetite may sicken and so die. <laughs> well, that strain again. It had a dying fall. Oh, it came o'er my ear like the sweet sound that breathes upon a bank of violet, stealing and giving odor. Enough. No more. It is not so sweet now as it was before. 
Oh, spirits of love, how quick and fresh art thou that, notwithstanding thy capacity, receiveth as the sea. Not enters there of what validity and pitch so air, but falls into abatement and low price even in a minute. So full of shapes is fancy that it alone is high fantastical. Will you go hunt, my lord? What, Curio? Uh, the heart. Why, so I do, the noblest that I have. For when mine eyes did see Olivia first, <laughs> methought she purged the air of pestilence. That instant was I turned into a heart, and my desires like fell in cruel hounds ere since pursue me. Oh, how now? What news from her? So, please, my lord, I might not be admitted, but from her handmaid I do return this answer. The element itself, till seven years' heat, shall not behold her face at ample view, but like a cloistress, she will veiled walk and water once a day her chamber round with eye offending brine. All this to season a brother's dead love, which she would keep fresh and lasting in her sad remembrance. Oh! <laughs> she that hath a heart of that fine frame to pay this debt of love but to a brother? How will she love when the rich golden shaft hath killed the flock of all affections else that live in her? When liver, brain, and heart, those sovereign thrones are all supplied and filled her sweet perfections with one self-king. Away, before me, to sweet beds of flowers. And love gods lie rich when canopied with flowers. Illyria, lady. And what should I do in Illyria? My brother, he is in Elysium. Perchance he is not drowned. It is perchance that you yourself were saved. Oh, my poor brother. And so perchance may he be. True, madam, and to comfort you with chance. Assure yourself, after our ship did split, when you and those poor numbers saved with you, hung on our driving boat, I saw your brother, most provident in peril, bind himself to a strong mast that lived upon the sea, where, like Arian on the dolphin's back, I saw him hold acquaintance with the waves, so long as I could see. Mine own escape unfoldeth to my hope. <laughs> Knowst thou this country? I met him well, for I was bred and born not three hours travel from this very place. Who governs here? A noble duke in nature as in name. What is his name? Orsino. Orsino? I have heard my father name him. He was a bachelor then. And so is now, or was so very late. For but a month ago I went from hence, and then twas fresh in murmur that he did seek the love of fair Olivia. What's she? A virtuous maid, the daughter of a count that died some 12 months since. Then leaving her in the protection of his son, her brother, who shortly also died for whose dear love they say she hath abjured the sight and company of men. Oh, that I served that lady. That were hard to compass, because she will admit no kind of suit. No, not the Duke's. Conceal me what I am, and be my aid for such disguise as haply shall become the form of my intent. I'll serve this Duke. Thou shalt present me as a eunuch to him. It may be worth thy pains, for I can sing and speak to him in many sorts of music that will allow me very worth his service. Be you his eunuch, and your mute I'll be. For when my tongue blabs, then let mine eyes not see. I thank thee. Lead me on. <laughs>
What a plague means my niece to take the death of her brother thus? I am sure care's an enemy to life. Don't buy my troth, said Toby. You must come in earlier at night. Your cousin, my lady, takes great exception to your ill hours. That quaffing and drinking will undo you. I heard my lady talk of it yesterday and of a foolish knight you brought in one night here to be her wooer. Who? Sir Andrew Aguecheek? Aye, he. Well, he's as tall a man as any's in Illyria. What's that to the purpose? Why, he has 3,000 ducats a year. Aye, but he'll have but a year in all these ducats. He's a very fool and a prodigal. Fie that you'll say so. He plays of the Ville de Gamboise and speaks three or four languages, word for word, without book, and hath all the good gifts of nature. Well, hath indeed almost natural, for besides that he's a fool, he's a great quarreler. And, but that he hath the gift of a coward to allay the gust he hath in quarreling, to start among the prudent, he would quickly have the gift of a grave. By this hand, they are scoundrels and subtractors that say so of him. Who are they? They that add, moreover, he's drunk nightly in your company. With drinking healths to my niece! Oh. I'll drink to her as long as there's passage in my throat and drink in Illyria. He's a coward and a coistrel that will not drink to my niece till his brains turn to the toe like a parish top. What, wench? Oh, 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 here comes Sir Andrew Eggyface. <laughs> Sir Toby Bage, how now, Sir Toby Bage? Wait, Sir Andrew. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 oh, oh. Bless you, fair shrew. And you too, sir. A cost, Sir Andrew, a cost. Uh, uh, what's that? My niece's chambermaid. Oh, oh. Uh, Good mistress Acost, I desire a better acquaintance. My name is Mary, sir. Um, uh, good mistress Mary Acost. <laughs> there you mistake, knight. Acost is front her, board her, woo her, assail her. By my troth, I would not undertake her in this company. Is that the meaning of Acost? Fare you well, gentlemen. And you let part so, Sir Andrew. Wouldst thou might never draw sword again. And you part so, mistress, I would I might never draw sword again. Fair lady, do you think you have fools in hand? Sir, I have not you by the hand. <laughs> Come, knight, a laxed cup of canary. Oh, you've never seen me so put down unless I drink this canary. Oh, methinks sometimes I have no more wit than a Christian, <laughs> or an ordinary man has. Uh, but I am a great eater of beef, and I believe that does harm to my wit. No question. Oh, and I thought so, I forswear it. Oh, I'll ride home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Pourquoi, my dear knight? What is pourquoi? Do or do not? I would I had bestowed that time in the tongues that I have in fencing, dancing, and cockfighting. Oh, had I but followed the arts. Then hadst thou had an excellent head of hair. Why? Would it have bended my hair? Past question. For thou seest it will not curl by nature. But it becomes me well enough, does not? Excellent. It hangs like flax on a distaff. And I hope to see a housewife take thee between her legs and spin it off. Oh, 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 oh. I'll home tomorrow, Sir Toby. Your niece will not be seen. And if she be, it's four to one, she'll none of me. The Count himself here hard by woos her. Oh, she'll none of the Count. She'll not match above her degree, neither in estate, years, nor wit. I've heard her swear it. Come, man. There's life in it. Uh, oh, 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 I'll stay a month longer. I am a fellow of the strangest mind in the world. I delight in mass and revels, sometimes all together. Art good at these kickshaws, knight? Oh, faith, I can cut a caper. And I can cut the mutton to it. Oh, and I think I have the hip trick simply as strong as any man oh. in Illyria. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Wherefore are these things hid? Wherefore have these gifts a curtain before them? Hey, is it a world to hide virtues in? 
I did this by the actual constitution of my leg. It was formed under the star. <laughs> I, my leg is strong, and it does indifferent well in salmon-colored stock. Oh, shall we about some rebels? What shall we do else? Were we not born under Taurus? Taurus? That's sides and heart. Oh, sir, it's legs and thighs. Let me see the caper. Oh! Ah, tub. Higher! Higher! Oh! Excellent! If the Duke continues these favors towards you, Cesario, you are like to be much advanced. He hath known you but three days, and already you are no stranger. <laughs> Here comes the count. Who saw Cesario ho? On your attendance, my lord, here. Uh, stand you a while, Luke. Oh. Cesario, thou knowest no less but all. I have unclasped to thee the book even of my secret soul. Therefore, good youth, address thy gate unto her. Be not denied access. Stand at her doors and tell them there thy fixed foot shall grow till thou have audience. Sure, my noble lord, if she be so abandoned to her sorrow as is spoke, she never will admit me. Be clamorous and leap all civil bounds rather than make unprofited return. Say I do speak with her, my lord. What then? Oh, then unfold the passion of my love. Surprise her with discourse of my dear faith. It may become thee well to act my woes. She will attend it better in thy youth than in annuncios of a more grave aspect. I think not so, my lord. <laughs> oh, dear lad, believe it. For they will yet belie thy happy years that say thou art a man. <laughs> Diana's lip is not more smooth than rubious. Thy small pipe is as the maiden's organ, shrill and sound. <clears throat> <laughs> and all assemblative uh, woman's part. I know thy constellation is right apt for this affair. Prosper well in this. And thou shalt live as freely as thy lord, to call his fortunes thine. I'll do my best to woo your lady. Yet a barful strife, who e'er I woo, myself would be his wife. Nay, either tell me where thou hast been, or I will not open my lips so wide as a bristle may enter in way of thy excuse. My lady will hang me for thy absence. Oh, let her hang me. He that is well hanged in this world need fear no colors. Well, make that good. Why, he shall see none to fear. Oh, that may you be bold to say in your foolery, yet you will be hanged for being so long absent. Many a good hanging prevents a bad marriage. Peace, <laughs> you rogue, no more of that. Here comes my lady. Make your excuse wisely, you were best. Whoa, apt, very apt. Well, go thy way. If Sir Toby would leave drinking, thou wert as witty a piece of Eve's flesh as any in Illyria. Wit and be thy will put me in good fooling. God bless thee, lady. Take the fool away. Oh, did you not hear, sir? Take away the lady. Go to, you're a dry fool. I'll know more of you. Oh. Besides, you grow dishonest. Too false, Madonna, that drink and good counsel will amend. For give a dry fool drink, and then is the fool not dry. If but this simple syllogism will serve, so. Oh, if not, what remedy? Sir, the lady bad take away the fool. Therefore, I say again, take her away. Sir, I bade them take away you. Miss Prisian in the highest degree. Lady? Cacullus non fucket monachum. <laughs> that is to say, I wear not motley in thy brain. Good lady, give me leave to prove you a fool. Can you do it? Dexteriously, Madonna. Make your proof. I must catechize you for it. Good my mouse of virtue, answer me. Well, sir, for want of other idleness, I'll bide your proof. Good Madonna. Why mournst thou? Good fool, for my brother's death. I think his soul is in hell, Madonna. I know his soul is in heaven, fool. The more fool, Madonna, to mourn for a brother's soul being in heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Take away the fool, sir. What think you of this fool, Malvolio? Does she not mend? And shall do. Till the pangs of death shake her. 
infirmity that doth decay the wise doth ever make the better fool. Oh, God send you, sir, a speedy infirmity for the better increasing of your folly. How say you to that, Malvolio? I marvel your ladyship takes delight in such a barren rascal. <sighs> oh, look you, she's out of sorts already. Unless you laugh and give her occasion, she is gagged. Oh, you are sick of self-love, Malvolio. <laughs> and taste with a distempered appetite. There is no slander in an allowed fool, though she do nothing but rail, oh. nor no railing in a known discreet man, though he do nothing but reprove. <laughs> now, Mercury, endue thee with leasing, for thou speakst well of fools. Madam, uh, there is at the gate a young gentleman much desires to speak with you. From the Count Orsino's, is it? I know not, madam. He's a fair young man and well attended. Who of my people holds him in delay? Sir Toby, madam, your kins. Fetch him off, I pray you. He speaks nothing but madman. Fie on him. Go you, Malvolio. If it be a suit from the Count, I am sick or not at home. What you will to dismiss it. Now you see how your fooling grows old and people dislike it. Thou hast spoke, Madonna, as if thy eldest son should be a fool, whom Jove crammed, filled with brains. <laughs> Here he comes. One of thy kin hast a most weak piamator. By mine honor, half drunk. What is he at the gate, cousin? A gentleman. A gentleman? What gentleman? Uh, tis a, a gentleman here. <coughs> <laughs> the plague of this pickled herring. <laughs> How now, son? Ah, good Sir Toby. Cousin, cousin, have you come so early by this lethargy? Lechery? I defy lechery. Give me faith, say I. There's one at the door. Ay, Mary, what is he? Oh, let him be the devil, and he will. I care not. Well, it's all one. What's a drunken man like, fool? Like a drowned man, a fool, and a madman. One draught above heat makes him a fool, the second mads him, the third drowns him. Go thou and seek the coroner, he is drowned. Go look after him. Ah, he is but mad yet, Madonna, and the fool will look to the madman. Madam, yon young fellow, Swears he will speak with you. I told him you were sick. He seems to have an understanding of that and therefore comes to speak with you. I told him you were sleeping. He seems to have a foreknowledge of that too and therefore comes to speak with you. What is to be said to him, madam? He's fortified against any denial. Tell him he shall not speak with me. Has been told so, and since he'll stand at your door like a sheriff's post or the supporter of a bench, but he will speak with you. What kind of man is he? Why, of uh, <coughs> mankind. <laughs> what manner of man? A very ill manner. He'll speak with you whether you will or no. Of what personage and years is he? Not old enough to be a man, nor young enough to be a boy. Tis with him in standing water, twixt boy and man, is very well favored, speaks very shrewishly. One would think his mother's milk were scarce out of him. Let him approach. Call in my gentlewoman. Gentlewoman, my lady calls. Give me my veil. Come, throw it on my face. We will once more hear Orsino's embassy. The Honorable Lady of the House. Which is she? Speak to me. I will answer for her your will. Most radiant, exquisite, and unmatchable beauty. I pray you tell me if this be the Lady of the House, for I never saw her. I am loath to cast away my speech, for besides that it is excellently well penned, I have taken great pains to con it. Whence came you, sir? I can say little more than I have studied, and that question's out of my part. 
Good gentle one, give me modest assurance if you be the lady of the house that I may proceed in my speech. Are you a comedian? No, my profound heart, and yet by the very fangs of malice I swear I am not that I play. Are you the lady of the house? If I do not usurp myself, I am. Most certain if you are she, you do usurp oh. yourself, for what is yours to bestow is not yours to reserve. But this is from my commission. I will on with my speech in your praise and then show you the heart of my message. Come to what is important in it. I forgive you the praise. Alas, I took great pains to study it. And tis poetical. It is more like to be feigned. I pray you keep it in. So it's not that time of moon with me to make one in so skipping a dialogue. <laughs> Will you hoist sail, sir? Here lies your way. No, good swabber, I am to hull here a little longer. <laughs> Some mollification for your giant, sweet lady? Tell me your mind. It alone concerns your ear. I bring no overture of war, no taxation of homage. I hold the olive in my hand. My words are as full of peace as matter. Yet you began rudely. What are you? What would you? The rudeness that hath appeared in me have I learned from my entertainment. Oh! What I am and what I would are a secret as maidenhead. To your ears, divinity. To any others, profanation. Give us this place alone. We will hear this divinity. Now, sir, what is your text? <clears throat> Most sweet lady. A comfortable doctrine, and much may be said of it. Where lies your text? In Orsino's bosom. In his bosom? In what chapter of his bosom? To answer by the method in the first of his heart. Oh. I have read it. It is heresy. Have you no more to say? Good madam, let me see your face. Have you any commission from your lord to negotiate with my face? You are now out of your text. But we will draw the curtain and show you the picture. Look you, sir, such a one I was this present. It's not well done. Excellently done, if God did all. Tis in grain, sir, twill endure wind and weather. Tis beauty truly blent, whose red and white nature's own sweet and cunning hand laid on. Lady, you are the cruelest she alive if you will lead these graces to the grave and leave the world no copy. Oh, sir, <laughs> I will not be so hard-hearted. I will give out divers schedules of my beauty. It shall be inventoried in every particle and utensil labeled to my will. As item, two lips in different red. Item, two gray eyes with lids to them. Item, one neck, one chin, and so forth. <laughs> Were you sent hither to praise me? I see you what you are. You are too proud. <laughs> But if you are the devil, you are fair. My lord and master loves you. Oh, such love could be but recompensed, though you were crowned the non pareil of beauty. How does he love me? With adorations, fertile tears, with groans that thunder love, with sighs of fire. Your lord does know my mind. I cannot love him. Yet I suppose him virtuous know him noble, of great estate, of fresh and stainless youth, a gracious person, but yet I cannot love him. He might have took his answer long ago. If I did love you in my master's flame with such a suffering, such a deadly life, in your denial I would find no sense. I would not understand it. Why, what would you? Make me a willow cabin at your gate, and call upon my soul within the house. Write loyal cantons of contaminated love, and sing them loud, even in the dead of night. Hallow your name to the reverberate hills, and make the pabbling gossip of the air cry out, or Livia. Oh, you should.
should not rest between the elements of air and earth, but you should pity me. <clears throat> you might do much. What is your parentage? Uh, above my fortunes, yet my state as well, I am a gentleman. Get you to your lord. I cannot love him, let him send no more. Unless perchance you come to me again to tell me how he takes it. Very well, I thank you for your pains. Spend this for me. I am no feed post lady, keep your purse. My master, not myself, lacks recompense. <clears throat> love, make his heart a flint that you shall love and let your fervor, like my master's, be placed in contempt. Farewell, fair cruelty. <laughs> what is your parentage? Of my fortunes, yet my state is well. I am a gentleman. Go be sworn, thou art, thy tongue, thy face, thy limbs, actions, and Spirit do give thee fivefold blazing. Not too fast. Soft. Soft. Unless the master were the man. How oh, now? Even so quickly may one catch the plague. Methinks I feel this youth's perfections with an invisible and subtle stealth to creep in at mine eyes. Well, let it be! What ho, Malvolio! Here, madam, <clears throat> at your service. Run after that same peevish messenger, the county's man. He left this ring behind him, would I or not? Desire him not to flatter with his lord, nor hold him up with hopes. I am not for him. If that the youth would come this way tomorrow, I'll give him reasons for it. <clears throat> Highly, Malvolio. Oh, I, I will, madam. I do I know not what, and fear to find mine eye too great a flatter for my mind. Fate, show thy force. Ourselves we do not owe. What is decreed must be. Would be this Stay no longer, nor will you not that I go with you. By your patience, no. My stars shine darkly over me, that therefore I shall crave of you your leave, that I may bear my evils alone. It were a bad recompense for your love to lay any of them on you. Let me yet know of you whither you are bound. No, sooth, sir. The malignancy of my fate might perhaps distemper yours. You must know of me then, Antonio. My father was that Sebastian of Messalina, whom I know you have heard of. He left behind him myself and a sister, both born in an hour, and if the heavens had been pleased, would we have so ended? But you, sir, altered that for some hour before you took me from the breach of the sea was my sister drowned. Alas, the day. A lady, sir, though it was said she much resembled me, was yet of many accounted beautiful. She bore a mind that envy could not but call fair. She's drowned already, sir, with salt water, though I seem to drown her remembrance again with more. Pardon me, sir, your bad entertainment. Oh, good Antonio, forgive me your trouble. If you will not murder me for my love, let me be your servant. If you will not undo what you have done, that is, kill him whom you have recovered, desire it not. Fare you well at once. I am bound to the Count Orsino's court. All the gentleness of the gods go with thee. I have many enemies in Orsino's court, else I would very shortly see thee there. Come what may, I do adore thee so. That danger shall seem sport, and I will go. Sir, will not you 
even now with the Countess Olivia? Even now, sir, on a moderate pace I have since arrived, but hither. She returns this ring to you, sir. You could have saved me my trouble to have taken it away yourself. Uh, moreover, she adds that you never be so hardy to come again in his affairs <coughs> unless it be to report your lord's taking of this. She, Receive it so. She took the ring of me. I'll none of it. Pshaw, sir. You peevishly threw it to her. Her will is it should be so returned. <laughs> if it be worth the stooping for, there it lies in your life. If not, be it his that finds it. What means this lady? Fortune forbid my outside have not charmed her. <laughs> she made good view of me. Indeed, so much me thought her eyes had lost her tongue, for she did speak and starts distractedly. She loves me? Sure. The cunning of her passion invites me in this churlish messenger, none of my lord's ring. Why, he sent her none. I am the man. If it be so as tis, poor lady, she were better love a dream. Oh, disguise, I see thou art a wickedness wherein the pregnant enemy does much. How easy it is for the proper faults in women's waxen hearts to set their forms. Alas, our frailty is the cause, not we, for such as we are made of, such we be. How will this badge? My master loves her dearly, and I, poor monster, fawn as much on him, and she, mistaken, seems to dote on me. What will become of this? As I am man, my state is desperate for my master's love, as I am woman. Now, alas, the day, what thriftless sighs shall poor Olivia breathe? Time! Thou must untangle this, not I. It is too hard a knot for me to untie. <laughs> consists of eating and drinking. Thou art a scholar! Oh, Let oh, us therefore eat and drink! Oh, 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 a stoop oh. of wine! Oh, here comes the fool in ah, faith! Ah, now my heart! Did you never see the picture of we three? <laughs> Welcome, ass! Now let's have a catch. Oh, aye, aye, a song, a song! There's sixpence for you. Now let's have a song! Oh, 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 and, uh, there's a testicle of me, too. Ah, would you have a love song or a song of good life? A, a love song, a love song. I, I, I care not for good life. <laughs> oh, mistress mine, where are you roaming? Mistress mine, where are you roaming? Stay in here, your true love popping. And you sing both high and low. Trip no further, pretty sweet in journeys and in lovers' meet. What is love is not hereafter. Present mirth hath pleasant laughter. What's to come is still unsure. In the lay there lies no plenty, so come kiss me, sweet and twenty. Use the 
Shall we make the welkin dance indeed? Shall we rouse the night owl in a catch? Shall we do that? Oh, most certain. And let our catch be thou knave. Hold thy peace, thou knave knight. Well, I shall be constrained in it to call thee knave knight. Tis not the first time I've constrained one to call me knave. <laughs> oh, begin, fool. It begins. Hold thy peace. Well, I shall never begin if I hold my peace. Oh. <laughs> come, come, begin. Hold thy peace. I prithee hold thy peace, thou hold knave. Thy peace. I hold thy peace, thou knave. Thou knave. I prithee hold thy peace, thou knave. Thou knave. Have not called up her steward Malvolio and bid him turn you out of doors. Never trust me. <laughs> Three merry men now we. <laughs> Am I not consanguineous? Am I not of her blood? Tilly belly. Lady, 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 I do it they all natural. For the love of God! Oh. Hey. Oh. My masters! Are you mad or what are you? Have you no wit, manners, no modesty, but to gabble like tinkers at this time of night? Is there no respect of place, person, no time in you? We did keep time, sir, in our catches. <laughs> Snack up. Sir Toby, I must be round with you. Though my lady harbors you as her kinsman, she is nothing allied to your disorders. If you can separate yourself from your misdemeanors, you are welcome to the house. If not, and it would please you to take your leave of her, she is most willing to bid you farewell. Farewell, dear heart. Hey, good to oh, you know me. Be gone. It's hard to show his things are almost gone. He said he meant so. Oh. I will never die. So to me, they lie. Shall I bid him go? any more than a steward. Dost thou think, because thou art virtuous, there shall be no more cakes of ale? Go, sir. Rub your chain with crumbs. Mariah, a stoop of wine. Mistress Mary, if you prize my lady's favor at anything more than contempt, you would not give means to this uncivil rule. Do! She shall hear of it by this hand! Go shake your ears! <laughs> oh! Sweet Sir Toby, be patient for tonight. For Monsieur Malvolio, leave me alone with him. If I do not gull him into a nay word and make him a common recreation, do not think that I have wit enough to lie straight in my bed. I know I can do it. Possess us! Possess us, tell us something of him. Oh, Mary, sir, sometimes he's a kind of a Puritan. Oh, if I thought that, I'd beat him like a dog. <laughs> what, for being a Puritan, thy exquisite reason, dear knight? I have no exquisite reason, but I have reason good enough. Well, the devil a Puritan that he is, an affectioned ass, the best persuaded of himself, so crammed as he thinks with excellencies, that it is his grounds of faith that all who look on him, love him. <laughs> and on that vice in him, will my revenge find notable cause to work. What wilt thou do? 
I will, uh, I, I will drop in his way some obscure epistles of love, wherein he will find himself most feelingly personated. I can write very like my lady, your niece. On a forgotten matter, you can hardly make distinction of our hands. Excellent. <laughs> I smell a device. I have it in my nose, too. He shall think by the letters thou wilt drop that they come from my niece and that she's in love with him. My purpose is indeed a horse of that color. Oh, and, and your horse would now make him an ass. An ass? I doubt not. Oh, twill be admirable. I know my physic will work with him. I will plant you two where he shall find the letter. Observe his construction of it. This night, to bed. And dream on the event. Farewell. Good night, Penthesilia. <laughs> Before me, she's a good wench. Uh, she's a beagle true bred, one that adores me. Yeah, but what of that? I was adored once too. <laughs> Come, knight, let's to bed. Thou hadst need send for more money. If I cannot recover your niece, I am a foul way out. Send for money, knight. If thou hast her not in the end, call me cut. Come, I'll go burn some sack. It's too late to go to bed now. <laughs> Come, knight. <laughs> Come, knight. <laughs> Give me some music. Come hither, boy. If ever thou shalt love, in the sweet pangs of it, remember me. For as I am, all true lovers are, unstayed and skittish in all motions else, save in the constant image of the creature that is beloved. How dost thou like this tune? It gives a very echo to the seat where love is throned. Thou dost speak Masterly. My life upon it, young though thou art, thine eye hath stayed upon some favor that it loves, hath it not, boy? A little by your favor. What kind of woman is? Of your complexion. She is not worth thee, then. What years of faith? About your years, my lord. Oh, too old by heaven. Let still a woman take an elder than herself. So where's she to him? So sways she level in her husband's heart. For boy, however we do praise ourselves, our affections are more giddy and unfirm, more longing, wavering, sooner lost and worn than women's are. I think it well, my lord. Then let thy love be younger than thyself, or thy affection cannot hold the bent. For women are as roses, whose fair flower, being once displayed, doth fall that very hour. And. So they are. Alas, that they are so, to die even when they to perfection grow. Oh, come, fellow. The song we had last night, mark it, Cesario. It is old and plain. The spinsters and the knitters in the sun and the free maids who weave their thread with bones do used to chant it. It is silly sooth and dallies with the innocence of love like the old age. Methought it did relieve my passions much. Come. But one verse. Are you ready, sir? I prithee sing. Come away, come away, death. And in sad Cyprus, let me be laid. Fly away, fly away, breath. For I Shroud of white, stuck with you, prepare it. My part of death, no one so true did share it. Not a flower, not a flower, sweet. On my sad coffin, let there be strewn, not a friend, not 
cloth of brand green. My poor corpse, where my bones shall be strewn, a thousand thousand sides to save, oh, lay me where sad true lovers never find my grave to weep there. Uh, there's for thy pains. Uh, no pain, sir. I take pleasure in singing. I'll pay thy pleasure then. And pleasure will be paid, sir, one time or another. Give me now leave to leave thee. The melancholy gods protect thee, and thy tailor make thy doublet of changeable taffeta, for thy mind is a very opal. Farewell. <laughs> Let all the rest give place. Once more, Cesario, get thee to yon same sovereign cruelty. Tell her my love, more noble than the world, prizes not quantity of dirty lands, the parts which fortune hath bestowed upon her. Tell her I hold as giddily as fortune, but tis that miracle and queen of gems that nature pranks her in, attracts my soul. But if she cannot love you, sir. Well, I cannot be so answered. Sooth, but you must. Say that some lady, as perhaps there is, hath for your love as great a pang of heart as you have for Olivia. You cannot love her. You tell her so, must she not then be answered? There is no woman, sides, can bide the beating of so strong a passion as love doth give my heart. No woman's heart so big to hold so much, they lack retention. <laughs> Alas, their love may be called appetite, but mine is as all hungry as the sea, and can digest as much. Make no compare between that love a woman can bear me, and that I owe Olivia. Aye, but I know. What dost thou know? Too well. What love women to men may owe. In faith, they are as true of heart as we. My father had a daughter loved a man as it might be, perhaps, were I a woman. I should your lordship. And what's her history? A blank, my lord. She never told her love, but let concealment, like a worm in the bud, feed on her damask cheek. She pined in thought, and with a green and yellow melancholy, she sat like patience on a monument, smiling at grief. Was not this love indeed? We men may say more, swear more, but indeed our shows are more than will, for still we prove much in our vows, but little in our love. But died thy sister of her love, my boy? I am all the daughters of my father's house, and all the brothers too, and yet I know not. Sir, shall I to this lady? Aye, that's the theme. <coughs> to her in haste, give her this jewel. Say my love can give no place. Find no delay. Come thy ways, Mistress Fabio. Oh, nay, I'll come. If I lose a scruple of the sport, let me be boiled to death with melancholy. <laughs> Wouldst thou not be glad to have the rascally sheep biter come by some notable shame? I would exult, man. You know he brought me out of favor with my lady about some cockfighting here. Ah, oh, right. here comes the little villain. How now, my metal of India? Set you all three into the box tree. Malvolio is coming down this walk. He's been yonder in the sun practicing behavior to his own shadow this half hour. Observe him for the love of mockery, for I know this letter will make a contemplative idiot of him. <laughs> Cursed in the name of jesting, lie thou there, for here comes the trout who must be caught with tickling. <laughs> Misfortune, all is fortune. Mariah once told me she did affect me, and I have heard herself come thus near. That should she fancy it would be one of my complexion. Besides, she uses me with a more exalted respect than anyone else that follows her. What should I make of it? 
Here's an overweening rogue. Spirit, you be. Count Malvolio. Out, rogue. Pistol him, pistol him. There's an example for it. A Duchess of Parma married a Chamberlain. Look how imagination blows him. Having been three months married to her, oh, for a stone bow to hit him in the eye. Calling my officers about me in my branched velvet gown, having come from the day bed where I have left Olivia sleeping. Fire it, Brimstone! Oh, shh, no, no, no. After a brief <laughs> travel of regard with the humor of state saying, I know my place, and I would should they do theirs to call for my kinsman, Toby. Bolts and shackles! Oh, Seven of my people at an obedient start make out for him. And I frown the while, and perchance uh, wind up my watch, or perchance uh, play with my <coughs> some rich jewel. Toby approaches. Curtsies to me. So the there. Uh, I extend my hand to him thus, quenching my familiar smile with an austere look of control, saying, Cousin, fortune having cast me upon your niece, give me this prerogative of speech. You must amend your drunkenness. Out, scab! Besides, you waste the treasure of your time with a foolish knight. That's me, I warrant you. And one Sir Andrew. I knew it was I, for many do call me fool. <laughs> what employment have we here? Oh, peace and the spirit of humor's intimate reading aloud to him. By my life. This is my lady's hand. To the unknown beloved, this and my good wishes. Her very phrases. No, but please your wax soft. To whom should this be? Oh, the sweet and liver and all. <laughs> Joe knows I love, but who? Lips do not move, no man must know. No man must know. No man must know. Uh, if this should be thee, Malvolio. Oh, now the puppy is near the kibble. <laughs> I may command what I adore, but silence like a Lucretia knife with bloodless stroke my heart doth gore. M-O-A-I doth sway my life. A fustian riddle. Excellent way, say I. Oh. M-O-A-I doth sway my life. Ah, but first, let me see, let me see, let me see. What dish of poison she hath dressed him? <laughs> I may command what I adore. Why, she may command me. I serve her. She is my lady. This is open to any formal capacity. There's no obstruction in this. But the end. What should that alphabetical position portend if I could make that resemble something in me? M-O-A-I. Oh, I. Make up that. M. Malvolio. Why, that begins my name. Did not I say he would work it out? <laughs> M-O-A-I. To crush this but little, it would bow to me, for every one of these letters is in my name. Soft you. He follows proofs. If this fall into thy hand, revolve. <laughs> In my stars, I am above thee. But be not afraid of greatness. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. <laughs> be opposite with a kinsman. Surly with servants, let thy tongue tang arguments of state. 
put thyself into the trick of singularity. She thus advises thee that sighs for thee. Remember who commended thy yellow stockings and wish to see thee ever cross-guarded. I say remember, go to thou art made if thou desirest to be so. If not, let me see thee a steward still. <laughs> the fellow of servants are not worthy to touch fortune's finger. Farewell, she that would alter services with thee, the fortunate, unhappy, daylight and champion discovers not more. This is open. I will be proud. I will study politic authors. I will uh, 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 baffle Sir Toby. I will brush off gross acquaintances. I will be point the wise of every man. Oh, every reason excites to this that my lady loves me. Joe, I thank thee. I am happy. <laughs> She did commend my yellow stockings of late, and did praise my being cross gartered I do not now fool myself to let imagination shade me. Uh, but everything points to this, that my lady loves me. I will put on yellow stockings and be cross gartered even with the swiftness of putting on. Joe, and my stars be praised. Here yet follows a postscript. Thou canst not choose but know who I am. If thou entertainst my love, let it appear in thy smiling. Thy smiles become thee well. Therefore in my presence still smile, dear my sweet, I prithee. <coughs> Jove. Uh, I, I, I thank thee. I will. Oh, smile. I, I will. Ow, oh, oh, oh. Ah, I will do everything. Ow, oh, I will have to do. <laughs> Is possible? I will not give up my part in this sport for a pension of thousands. I could marry this wench for this device. And so could I, too. And ask no more the dowry with her, but such another jest. Oh, no, I neither. Oh, here comes my noble gold catcher. Oh, wilt thou set thy foot upon my neck? Uh, or on mine, either. If you would then see the fruits of this sport, mark his first approach before my lady. He will come to her in yellow stockings, oh. and tis a color she abhors, and cross garnered, a fashion she detests. And he will smile on her, which will now be so unsuitable to her disposition, being addicted to a melancholy as she is, that it cannot but turn him into a notable contempt. If you would see it, follow me. To the gates of Tartar, thou most excellent devil of wit. Sir Toby? Oh, oh, uh, Sir Toby, I'll, I'll make one. Uh, oh. Intermission.
sir. I do live by the church. Art thou a churchman? No such matter, sir. I do live by the church, for I do live at my house, and my house doth stand by the church. <laughs> Art not thou the Lady Livia's fool? No such matter, sir. The Lady Olivia has no folly. She will keep no fool, sir, till she be married. And fools are to husbands as pilchers are to herrings. The husband's the bigger. I am not the Lady Olivia's fool. I am a corrupter of words. I saw thee late at the Count Orsino's. Foolery, sir, doth walk about the orb like the sun. It shineth everywhere. <laughs> There's expenses for thee. Oh, now Jove, in his next commodity of hair, grant thee a beard. Ow! <laughs> By my troth, I'll tell thee I am almost sick for one, uh -huh. so I would not have it grow on my chin. <laughs> is thy lady within? My lady is within, sir. I will conster to them whence you come, who you are, or what you would, or out of my welkin. I would say element, but that word is or worn. This fellow is wise enough to slay the fool, and to do that well craves a kind of wit. Save you, gentlemen. And you, sir. <clears throat> du vous gardez, mon sourd. Et vous aussi, votre serviteur. Um, uh, I hope you are, and, and I am yours. <laughs> Will you encounter the house, sir? My niece is desirous you should enter if your trade be with her. I am bound to your niece, sir. That is, she is the list of my voyage. Taste your legs, sir. Put them to motion. My legs do better understand me, sir, than I understand what you mean by bidding me taste my legs. I mean to go, sir, to enter. I will answer with gate and entrance, but we are prevented. <laughs> <laughs> Most excellent, accomplished lady, the heavens rain odors on you. That you so rare courtier rain odors well. My matter hath no voice, madam, but to your own most pregnant and vouchsafed ear. Odors pregnant and vouchsafed? I'll get them all three ready. Let the garden door be shut and leave me to my hearing. Give me your hand, sir. Oh. Uh, my duty, madam, and most humble service. What is your name? Cesario is your servant's name, fair princess. Oh. My servant, sir. Twas never merry world since lowly fading was called compliment. Your servant to the count, Orsino, you. And he is yours, and his must needs be yours. Your servant's servant is your servant, madam. For him, I think not on him. For his thoughts, would they were blanks rather than filled with me. Madam, I come to wet your gentle thoughts on his behalf. Oh, by your leave, I pray you. I bid you never speak again of him. <clears throat> but would you undertake another suit? I had rather hear you solicit that than music. <laughs> than music. <laughs> From the sphere. Dear lady. Give me leave, I beseech you. <clears throat> I did send, of that last enchantment you did hear, a ring in chase of you. So did I abuse myself. My servant, and I fear me you. Under your hard construction must I sit to force that on you in a shameful cunning which you do none of yours. What might you think? Have you not set mine honor at the stake and baited it with all the unmuzzled thoughts a tyrannous heart can think? Roof, roof, roof. To what of your receiving enough is shown? A cypress, not a bosom, hides my heart. <laughs> so let me hear you speak. I pity you. <laughs> Thou could agree to love. No, not agrees, for tis a vulgar proof that very oft we pity enemies. Well then, methinks it's time to smile again. Oh, world, 
of what the poor are to be proud. If one should be the prey, how much the better to fall before the lion and the wolf. The clock upbraids me of the waste of time. Be not afraid, good youth, I will not have you. And yet when wit and youth are come to harvest, your wife is like to reap a proper man. There lies your way to you west. Then, westward ho! Grace and good disposition attend your ladyship. You'll nothing, madam, to my lord by me. Say, I prithee, tell me what thou think'st of me. That you do think you are not what you are. If I think so, I think the same of you. Then think you right, I am not what I am. <laughs> I would you were as I would have you be. Would it be better, madam, than I am? I wish it might, for now I am your fool. Sorrio, by the roses of the spring, by maidenhood, honor, truth, and everything, I love thee so that maugre all thy pride, nor wit nor reason can my passion hide. Do not extort thy reasons from this clause, for that I woo, thou therefore hast no cause, but rather reason thus with reason fetter. Love sought is good, but given unsought is better. By innocence I swear, and by my youth, I have one heart, one bosom, and one truth, and that no woman has, nor never none, shall mistress be of it, save I alone. And so, adieu, good madam. Nevermore will I my master's tears to you deplore. Yet come again, for thou perhaps mayst move that heart which now abhors to like his love. <laughs> Faith, I'll not stay a jot longer. Thy reason, dear Venom, give thy reason. You must needs yield your reason, Sir Andrew. Mary, I saw your niece do more favors to the Count's serving man than ever she bestowed upon me. What, did she see thee the while, old boy? Tell me that. As plain as I see you now. This was a great argument of love in her toward you. Oh, oh yes. Slight, would you make an ass of me? She only showed favor to the youth in your sight to exasperate you, to awake your Tormas valor, to put fire in your heart and brimstone in your liver. You should have then accosted her by some excellent jests, fire new from the mint. But now you're sailed to the north of my lady's opinion, oh. unless you do redeem it by some laudable attempt of either valor or policy. And it be anyway. It must be with valor, for policy I hate. Why then, build me thy fortunes upon the basis of valor. Challenge me the Count's youth to fight with him. Oh. Hurt him in 11 places. My niece shall take note of it. And assure thyself there is no love broker in the world can more prevail in man's commendation with woman than report of valor. There is no way but this, Sir Andrew. Will, will either of you bear me a challenge to him? No. Write it in a martial hand. Be cursed and brief. Let there be gall enough in thy ink, though thou write with a goose pen, no matter. About it. <laughs> Where shall I find you? We'll call thee at the cubiculo. <laughs> Go! Oh, exciting, exciting. <laughs> oh, this is a dear mannequin to you, Sir Toby. I have been dear to him, kid. Some 2,000 strong or so. We'll have a rare letter from him, but you'll not deliver it. Oh, never trust me then. And by all means, stir on the youth to an answer. For Andrew, if he be opened and you find so much blood in his liver as will clog the foot of a flea, I'll eat the rest of the anatomy. And his opposite, the youth bears in his visage no presage of cruelty. Oh, oh look where the youngest wren of mine comes. If you desire to flee and would laugh yourself in this stitch and follow me, young Don Malvolio has turned heathen. He's a very renegado. He's in yellow stockings. And cross gartered Most villainously. He doth obey every point of the letter that I drop to betray him. You've not seen such a 
such a thing as tis. I can hardly forbear hurling things at him. <laughs> I know my lady will strike him. If she do, he'll smile and take it for a great favor. <laughs> Come, bring us. Bring us where he is. I would not for my will have troubled you, but since you make your pleasure of your pains, I will no further oh, chide you. I could not stay behind you in these parts, which to a stranger, unguided and unfriended, often proved rough and unhospitable. My kind Antonio, I can no other answer make but thanks, and thanks, and ever thanks. What's to do? Shall we go see the relics of this town? Tomorrow, sir. Best first go see your lodging. I am not weary. And tis long tonight. I pray you, let us satisfy our eyes with the memorials and the things of fame that do renown this city. Would you pardon me? I do not without danger walk these streets. Once in a sea fight against the Count, I did some service of such note indeed that were I taken here would scarce be answered. Be like you slew great number of his people? Oh, the offense is not of such a bloody nature. Albeit the quality of the time and quarrel might well have given us bloody argument. It might have since been answered in repaying what we took from them, which for traffic's sake most of our city did. Only myself stood out for which if I be lapsed in this place I shall pay dear. Do not then walk too open. Oh, it doth not fit me. Oh, hold, hold, sir. <laughs> Here's my purse. In the south suburbs that the elephant is best to lodge. I will bespeak our diet whilst you beguile the time and feed your knowledge and viewing of the town. There shall you have me. Why I your purse? Why happily your eyes might light upon some toy you have desired to purchase, and your store I think is not fit for idle market, sir. I'll be your purse bearer and leave you for an hour. To the elephant! I do remember! <laughs> Sent after him. He says he'll come. How shall I feast him? What bestow of him? For youth is bought more oft than begged or borrowed. I speak too loud. Where's Malvolio? He's sad and civil and suits well for a servant with my fortunes. Where's Malvolio? He's coming, madam, but in very strange manner. He's sure possessed, madam. Why, what's the matter? Does he rave? No, madam. He does nothing but smile. Your, your ladyship will best to have some guard about you if he come, for sure the man is tainted in his wits. <laughs> Go call him hither. I am as mad as he, if sad and merry madness equal be. <laughs> Lady, ho, ho. Smilest thou, I sent for thee upon a sad occasion. Sad? I could be sad. This does cause some obstruction in the blood, this cross goddering. But what of that, if it please the eye of one? It is with me as the true son it is. Please one and please all. Why, how dost thou, man? What is the matter with thee? <laughs> Not black in my mind, though yellow in my leg. It did come to his hands and commands shall be executed. I think we do know the sweet Roman hand. Wilt thou go to bed, Malvolio? To bed? Oh, 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 I, my sweetheart, and I'll come to thee. God comfort thee! Why dost thou smile so and kiss thy hand so oft? How do you, Malvolio? I, Nightingale's answer door. Why appear you with this ridiculous boldness before my lady? Be not afraid of greatness. It was well writ. What means thou by that, Malvolio? Some are born 
great. Huh? Some achieve greatness. What sayest thou? And some have greatness thrust upon them. Heaven restore thee! Remember who commended thy yellow stockings. Thy yellow stockings? And uh, wish to see thee cross-gartered. Cross-gartered? Go to, thou art made, if thou desirest to be so. Am I made? If not, let me see thee a servant steal. Why, this is very midsummer madness. Adam, oh! <laughs> The young gentleman of Count Orsino has returned. I could hardly entreat him back. He attends your ladyship pleasure. I'll come to him. Good Maria, let this fellow be looked to. Where's my cousin Toby? Let some of my people have the special care of him. I would not have him miscarry for the half of my dowry. Oh, ho! <laughs> you come near me now. No less a person than Sir Toby to look to me. This concurs directly with her letter. She sends him on purpose that I may be stubborn with him. Uh, be stubborn and opposite with a kinsman, surly with servants. <laughs> and when she went away just now, let this fellow be looked to, not Malvolio, not after my degree, but fellow, by everything that hears together, that no dram of a scruple, no scruple of a scruple, no obstacle, no unsafe or indecipherable circumstance. <laughs> what may be said? Nothing that can be can come between me and uh, the full prospects of my hopes. But Joe, not I, is the doer of this, and he is to be thanked. Which way is he? In the name of sanctity, if all the devils of hell possessed him, yet I'll speak to him. Oh, there he is. Ah! <laughs> there he is. How is it with you, sir? How is it with you, man? Go off. I discard you. Let me alone with my private. Go off. Oh. Lo, how hollow the fiend speaks within him. Pray God he be not bewitched. My lady would not lose him for more than I'll say. How now, mistress? Oh, Lord. For thee, hold thy peace. This is not the way. Do you not see you move him? Let me alone with him. Oh, no way but gentleness. Gently, gently, the fiend is rough and will not be roughly used. <laughs> How now, my boarcock? How dost thou, Chuck? Get him to say his prayers, good Sir Toby. Get him to pray. My prayers, minx? No, I'll warrant you, he will not hear of godly. <laughs> Go, hang yourselves all. You are idle, shadow, things. I am not of your element. You shall know more hereafter. Oh, if this were played upon a stage now, I would condemn it as an improbable fiction. Oh. Come, we'll have him bound. My niece is already in the belief he's mad. Mm -hmm. We may carry it thus for our pleasure in his penance. More matter for a May morning. Uh, oh. oh, here's the challenge. Read it. I warrant there's vinegar and pepper in it. Isn't it so saucy? I ist do but read. <laughs> Give me. You, whatsoe'er thou art, thou art but a scurvy fellow. Good and valiant. Mm -hmm. Wonder not, nor admire not in thy mind why I do call thee so, for I will show thee no reason for it. A good note that will keep you from the blow of the law. Thou comest to the Lady Olivia, and in my sight she uses thee kindly. 
but thou liest in thy throat. Ha! That is not the matter I challenge thee for. Very brief, and to exceedingly good sense, less. <laughs> I will waylay thee going home, where, if it be thy chance to kill me, Good! Thou killst me like a rogue and a villain. <laughs> Still, you keep on from the windy side of the law of God. Fairly well. And God have mercy upon one of our souls, thy friend as thou usest him. <coughs> and thy sworn enemy, Andrew Eggucheek. Well, this letter do not, his legs cannot. I'll give it him. You may have very fit occasion for it. He is now in some commerce with my lady and will by and by depart. Go, Sir Andrew. Scout before him at the corner of the orchard. So as soon as ever thou seest him, draw. And as thou drawest, swear horrible. Away! Nay, let me alone for swearing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now will not I deliver his letter. Well, the behavior of the gentleman gives him out to be of good capacity and breeding. Now, I will deliver his challenge by word of mouth. Set upon Aguchik a notable report of valor and drive the gentleman, as I'm sure his youth will aptly receive it, into a most hideous opinion of his rage, skill, fury, and impetuosity. <coughs> this will so fright them both that they will kill one another by the look, like cockatrices. <laughs> I have said too much unto a heart of stone, and laid mine honor too uncharity on it. There is something in me that reproves my fault, but such a headstrong, potent fault it is that it but mocks reproof. With the same behavior that your passion bears goes on my master's grief. Here, wear this jewel for me. Tis my picture. Refuse it not, it hath no tongue to vex you. And I beseech you, come again tomorrow. What will you ask of me that I'll deny? That honor saved may upon asking give. Nothing but this, your true love for my master. How with mine honor may I give him that which I have given to you? I will acquit you. Well, come again tomorrow, fare thee well. <laughs> Fiend like thee might bear my soul to hell. Gentlemen! God save you. And you, sir? That defense thou hast, betake thee to it. Of what nature the wrongs are thou hast done him, I know not. But thy interceptor, full of despite, bloody as the hunter, attends thee at the orchard end. <laughs> You are mistaken, sir. I am sure no man hath any quarrel to me. You'll find it otherwise, I assure you. Therefore, betake you to your guard, for your opposite hath in him what youth, strength, skill, and wrath can furnish man withal. I pray you, sir, what is he? <laughs> well, he is a devil in a private brawl. Souls and bodies hath he divorced three, and his incensement at this moment is so implacable that satisfaction can be none but by pangs of death and sepulchre. I will return again into the house and desire some conduct of the lady. I am no fighter. I have heard of some kind of men that put quarrels purposely on others to taste their valor, but like this is a man of that quirk. Sir, no. His indignation derived itself out of a very competent injury. Therefore on, or strip your sword stark naked. For meddle you must, that's certain. Or forswear to wear iron about you. This is as uncivil as strange. I beseech you, do me this courteous office as to know of the knight what my offense to him is. It is something of my negligence, nothing of my purpose. I will do so. Fabian, stay you by this gentleman till my return. I pray you, do you know of this matter? I know the knight is incensed against you, even to a mortal abitrement. But nothing of the circumstance more. I beseech you, what manner of man is he? He is indeed, sir, the most bloody, fatal, and eternal opposite to any man you could find in Illyria. <sighs> will you walk towards him? I will make peace with him if I can. I shall be much bound to you for it. I am one that had rather go with Sir Priest than Sir Knight. I care not who knows so much of my metal. Why, man, he's a very devil. I have not seen such a virago. They say he hath been fencer to the Sophie. Oh, pox on it, 
I'll not meddle with him. Yeah, but he will not now be pacified. Fabian can scarce hold him yonder. Oh, plague on it. And I thought he had been valiant and so cunning in fence. I'd have seen him damned or I'd have challenged him. I'd, oh, let him let the matter slip and I'll give him my horse, great Capulet. I'll make the motion. Stand here, make a good show on it. This shall end without the perdition of souls. Mary, I'll ride your horse as well as I ride you. I have his horse to take up the quarrel. I have persuaded him the youth the devil. He is as conceited of him and pants and looks pale as if a bear were at his heels. <laughs> there is no remedy, sir. He will fight with you for his oath's sake. Mary, he hath better be thought him of his quarrel. He finds that now scarce to be worth talking of. Therefore, draw for the supportance of his vow. He protests he will not hurt you. Oh, pray God, defend me. A little thing would make me tell them how much I lack of a man. Give ground if you see him furious. Come, Sir Andrew. There's no remedy. The youth will, for his honor's sake, have one bout with you, but he has promised me. As he is a gentleman and a soldier, he will not ki oh. hurt you. Oh. Pray God he keep his word. I do assure you it is against my will. Come, to it. Ah! Ah! No, no, no. Draw. Oh! 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 his love dares do more than you have heard him brag to you, he will. Nay, if you be an undertaker, I am for you. Oh, oh Toby. Oh, oh, Toby. Oh, 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 oh. Come, sir. Toby, careful. Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, oh, oh. Mr. Toby, hold. Here come the officers. I'll be with you anon. Pray, sir, put your sword. Please. <laughs> Mary, will I? And, and for that I promised I'll be as good as my word. He will bear you easily and reigns well. What? This is the man. Do thy office. Antonio, I arrest thee at the suit of Count Orsino. Well, you do mistake me, sir. No, sir, not a jot. I know your favor well. Though, now you wear no sea cap on your head. I must obey. This comes with seeking you, but there's no remedy. I shall answer it. What will you do now my necessity makes me to ask you for my purse? It grieves me much more for what I cannot do for you than what befalls myself. You stand amazed, but be of comfort. Come, sir. I must entreat of you some of that money. What money, sir? For the fair kindness you have showed me, I'll, I'll make division of my present with you. Do you deny me now? Is it possible my deserts to you can lack persuasion? Do not tempt my misery, lest it make me so unsound a man as to upbraid you for those kindnesses that I have done for you. I know of none, nor know I you by voice or any feature. I pray you, sir, go. Let me speak a little. This youth that you see here, I snatched one half out of the jaws of death, relieved him with such sanctity of love, and to his image, which me thoughts did promise most venerable worth, did I devotion. Is that to us? The time goes on. Away. But oh, how vile and idle this God proves. The man grows mad. Come, come, lead me on. A very dishonest, paltry boy, more a coward than a hare. His dishonesty appears in leaving his friend here in necessity and denying him. And as for his cowardship, ask Fabian. A coward, a most devout coward, religious in it. Slid. I'll after him again and beat him. Do cuff him soundly, but never draw thy sword. And I do not. Oh, oh come, let's see the event. Come, I'll lay any money will come to nothing yet. Will you make me believe I am not sent 
Go to, go to! Thou art a foolish fellow, let me be clear of thee. Well held out in faith. No, I do not know you, nor am I not sent for you by my lady to bid you come and speak with her, nor is your name not Master Cesario, nor this is not my nose, neither. Nothing that is so is so. I prithee, vent thy folly somewhere else, thou knowst me not. Vent my folly? He has heard this word of some great man, and now applies it to a fool. Vent my folly. I prithee, sir, what shall I vent to my lady? Shall I vent to her that thou art coming? I prithee, foolish Greek, depart from me. Oh. There's money for thee. If you tarry longer, I shall give worse payment. Well, thou hast a very open hand. Ah, ha! So... There, I have met you again. <laughs> There's for thee. <laughs> and why, there's for thee. <laughs> and there, and there. Are all the people mad? This will I tell my lady straight. Come, sir, hold. Well, I would not be in some of your coats for two pence. Nay, let him alone. I'll go another way to work with him. I'll have an action of battery against action. him. Battery will be done in law and Illyria. So I struck him first. That is no matter for that. Let go thy hand! What wouldst thou now? If thou darest tempt me further, draw thy sword. Nay, then I must have some of this malapert blood from you. Watch, Toby, careful! Oh. Oh. Here you go. Oh. Toby! Oh. 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 oh, Toby! On thy life I charge thee, hold! Madam? Will it ever be thus, ungracious wretch? Fit for the mountains and the barbarous caves where manners ne'er were preached? Out of my sight! Be not offended, dear Cesario. Rudesby, be gone! I prithee, gentle friend, let thy fair wisdom, not thy passion, sway in this uncivil and unjust extent against thy peace. Go with me to my house. And hear thou there how many fruitless pranks this ruffian hath botched up, that thou thereby mayst smile at this. Thou shalt not choose but go, do not deny. <laughs> Who threw his soul for me? He started one poor heart of mine in me. <laughs> what relish is in this? How runs the stream? Or I am mad, or else this is a dream. Let fancy still my sense and lead thee steep. If it be thus to dream, still let me sleep. May come, I prithee, if thou be ruled by me. Madam, I will. <laughs> oh, say so, and so be. <laughs> Hey, I pretty, put on this gown and this beard. Make him believe thou art Sir Topas, the curate. Well, I will put it on, and I will dissemble myself in it, when I were the first that ever dissembled in such a gown. Oh, oh. Go bless thee, Master Parson. Bonos dear Sir Toby. Or, as the old hermit of Prague, who never saw pen nor ink very wittily, said to a niece of King Gorboduc, that that is, is. So I, being Master Parson, am Master Parson. For what is that but that, and is but is. <laughs> to him, Sir Topas. Peace, I say, peace in this prison. Who calls there? Oh, Master Topas, the Parson, come to see Malvolio the lunatic. <laughs> Sir Topas, Sir, Sir, Sir Topas. Who? Yes. So, so, Popus, go to my lady. Oh, out, indescribable fiend. Speakest thou nothing but of ladies? Sir Topus, never has man been thus wrong. 
They have lain me here in darkness and... Thy dishonest Satan, sayest thou, the house is dark. As hell, Sir Topaz. But it are bay windows, transparent as barricados, and yet complainest thou of obstruction. Sir Topaz, I am not mad. I tell thee, this house is dark. Madman thou, errest, I say, there is no darkness but ignorance. Remain thou still in darkness. Farewell. Sir Topaz! Farewell! Sir Topaz! To him, in thine own voice, bring me word how thou dost find him. I would we were well rid of this knavery. If he may be conveniently delivered, I would he were. For I am now so far in offense with my niece that I can no longer pursue with any safety this sport, the upshot. Come, by and by to my chamber. <laughs> hey, Robin, jolly Robin, tell me how my lady does. Whoa. My lady's unkind for thee. Alas, why is she so? Fool. She loves another, eh? Fool, I say! Well, who called her? Huh? Good fool, as, as ever thou wilt deserve well at my hand. Help me to a candle, and pen, ink, and paper. As I am a gentleman, I will live to thank thee for it. Master Malvolio. Aye, good fool. Oh, how fell you besides your five wits? Fool, never was man so notoriously harmed. I tell thee, I am as well in my wits Fool as thou art. Oh, but as well? Hmm, then you are mad indeed. Oh. If you be no better in your mind than a fool, advise you what you say. The minister is here. Master Malvolio, <laughs> Master Malvolio, <laughs> thy wits to heavens restore. Endeavor thyself to sleep and leave my fame nibble babble. Sir Topaz? Mm, maintain Sir no Topaz. words with him, young man. What? Who I, sir? No, sir, not I, sir. Merry, oh, men. I will, I will. The, the fool, 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 I Shh, say. Be patient. What say you? I am shent for speaking with you. The fool, help me to some light and paper and convey what I will set down to my lady. Well, I will help you to it, but... But tell me indeed, sir, are you not mad indeed, or do you but counterfeit? I am not, believe me, I tell thee true. Uh, I will never believe a madman till I see his brains. But I will help you to a light and paper and ink. Oh, uh, I will requite thee to the highest degree, fool. But I prithee. Be gone. Well, I'm gone, sir, and anon, sir, I'll be with you again in a thrice just like the old vice. Your needs to sustain. This is the air. That is the glorious sun. This pearl she gave me, I do feel it and see it. And though tis wonder that enwraps me thus, yet tis not madness. Where's Antonio then? I could not find him at the elephant, yet there he was, and there I found this credit that he did range the town to seek me out. His counsel now might do me golden service, for though my soul disputes well with my sense, that this may be some error, but no madness. Yet doth this accident and flood of fortune so far exceed all instance, all discourse, that I am ready to distrust mine eyes and wrangle with my reason that persuades me to any other trust but that I am mad. Or else the lady's mad. Yet, if twere so, she could not sway her house, command her followers, 
take and give back affairs and their dispatch with such a smooth, discreet, and stable bearing as I perceive she does. There's something in it that is deceivable. <laughs> but here the lady comes. Blame not this haste of mine. <laughs> if you mean well, now go with me and with this holy man into the chantry by. There before him, and underneath that consecrated roof, light me the full assurance of your faith, that my most jealous and too doubtful soul might live at peace. What do you say? I'll follow this good man and go with you. And having sworn truth, ever will be true. Then lead the way, good father. And heaven so shine that they may fairly note this act of mine. <laughs> for my friends. Just the contrary, the better for thy friends. No, sir, the worse. How can that be? Well, sir, they praise me and make an ass of me, whereas my foes, they tell me plainly, I am an ass. Therefore, sir, by my foes, I profit in the knowledge of myself and by my friends, I am abused. So, if your four negatives make your two affirmatives the better for my foes and the worse for my friends. <laughs> Why, this is excellent. Oh, no, indeed not, sir. Though it please you to be one of my friends. Well, thou shalt not be the worse for me. Ah. There's gold. Oh, but then it would be double dealing. I would you could make it another. Uh, you can fool no more money out of me at this throw. Oh. If you let your lady know I'm here to speak with her and bring her along with you, it may awaken my oh. bounty further. A lullaby to your bounty, sir. Till I come again, I will awaken it anon. Oh. Here comes the man, sir, that did rescue me. Well, that face of his, I do remember it well. Yet when I saw it last, it was besmeared as black as Vulcan in the smoke of war. My lord, this is that Antonio that did the phoenix take in Tiger Board. Here in the streets, desperate of shame and state, did we apprehend him in private brabble? He did me kindness, sir, drew on my side, yet in conclusion put strange speech upon me. I know not what twas but distraction. Notable pirate, thou saltwater thief, what foolish boldness brought thee to their mercies those whom in terms so bloody and so dear, thou hast made thine enemies. Orsino, noble sir, be pleased I shake off these names you give me. Antonio never yet was thief or pirate, though I confess on base and grounds enough Orsino's enemy. A witchcraft drew me hither. That most ungrateful boy there by your side, from the sea's rude enraged and foamy mouth, did I redeem. For his sake did I expose myself, pure for his love, into the dangers of this adverse town. Drew to defend him when he was beset, where when apprehended, his false cunning, not meaning to partake with me in danger, taught him to face me out of his acquaintance, denied me mine own purse, which I had recommended to his use not half an hour before. How can this be? The wind came into this town. Today, my lord, and for three months before, not a minute's day or night, both day and night, did we keep company. Oh, here comes the Countess. Now heaven walks on earth. But for thee, fellow, fellow, thy words are madness. Three months hath this youth tended upon me. But more of that anon. Take him aside. What, what would my lord, but that he may not have, wherein Olivia may seem serviceable? Cesario, you do not keep promise with me. Madam? Uh, gracious Olivia. What say you, Cesario, good my lord? My lord would speak, my duty hushes me. If it be aught to the old tune, my lord, it is as fat and fulsome to mine ear as howling after music. Still, 
<laughs> so cruel. Still so constant, Lord. To what? Perverseness? Thou uncivil lady, to whose ingrate and unauspicious altars my soul, the faithfulest of offerings, hath breathed out that e'er devotion tendered, what shall I do? Even what it please, my lord, that shall become him. Hear you this, since you to non-regardance cast my faith, and that I partly know the instrument that screws me from my true place in your favor, they view the marble-breasted tyrant still. But this, your minion, whom I know you love, and who, by heaven, I swear, I tender dearly, him will I tear out of that cruel eye where he sits crowned in his master's spite. Come, boy, with me. My thoughts are ripe in mischief. I'll sacrifice the lamb I love to spite a raven's heart within a dove. And I, most jock and apt and willingly, to do you rest, a thousand deaths would die. Where goes Cesario? After him I love. More than I love these eyes, more than my life. More by all mores than e'er I shall love wife. <laughs> I mean attested. How I am beguiled. Who does beguile you? Who does do you wrong? Hast thou forgot thyself? Is it so long? Call forth the Holy Father. Come, away. Whither, my lord, Cesario, husband, stay. Husband? My husband? Can he that deny? Her husband, Sarah. No, my lord, not I. Say, alas, it is the baseness of thy fear that makes thee strangle thy propriety. Fear not, Cesario, take thy fortunes up. Be that thou knowest thou art, and then thou art as great as that thou fearest. O oh, welcome, Father, Father, I charge thee by thy reverence, here to unfold, though lately we intended to keep in darkness, what occasion now reveals before it is ripe, what thou dost know hath newly passed between this youth and me. A contract of eternal bond of love, confirmed by mutual joinder of your hands, oh, thou assembling the God. holy clause of What wilt thou be when time has so risen on thy case? Or wilt thou be cast on the servant of this compact seal in my life? I will, and take a protest of thee henceforth, for thou and I shall never meet. My lord, I do protest. I do not swear. Hold little faith, though thou hast too much fear. Oh, for the love of God, a surgeon. Send one presently to Sir Toby. What has happened? Has broke my head across and has given Sir Toby a bloody coxcomb too. Oh, for the love of God, your help. I would rather than 40 pound I were at home. Who has done this, Sir Andrew? The Count's serving man, one Cesario. <laughs> we took him for a coward, but he's a very devil incarnate. My gentleman, Cesario. Oh! Odds lightning, there he is! You broke my head for nothing, and that that I did, I was set on to do it by Sir Toby. Why do you speak to me? I never hurt you. You drew your sword upon me without cause, but I bespake you fair and hurt you not. If a bloody coxcomb be a hurt, you have hurt me. I think you set nothing by a bloody coxcomb. Oh, here comes Sir Toby, halting. Oh, you shall hear more. But had he not been in drink, he would have tickled you other gates than he did. How now, gentlemen? How is with you? It's all one. <laughs> Has hurt me, and there's an end on it. Soft. Did see Dick surgeon soft? Ah, he's drunk, Sir Toby, an hour gone. His eyes were set at eight this morning. He's a rogue, and a passing measure's paven. I hate a drunken rogue. Away with him! Who hath made this havoc with them? I'll help you, Sir Toby. We'll be dressed together. Will you help? An ass head and a coxcomb? A, a knave? A, a thin-faced knave? And a dull... Get him to bed and let his heart be looked to. I am sorry, madam, I have hurt your kinsman. But had it been the brother of my blood, I must have done no less with wit and safety. You throw a strange regard upon me, and by that I do perceive it hath offended you. Pardon me, sweet one, even for the vows we made each other but so late ago. <laughs> one face, one voice, one habit, and two persons. 
In natural perspective, that is and is not. Antonio! Oh, my dear Antonio! How have the hours racked and tortured me since I've lost thee? Sebastian, are you? Fearst thou that, Antonio? But how have you made division of yourself? <laughs> An apple cleft in two is no more twin than these two creatures. Which is Sebastian? Most wonderful! <laughs> I stand there? I never had a brother, nor can there be that deity in my nature of here and everywhere. I had a sister whom the blind waves and surges devoured. Of charity, what, what kin are you to me? What countrymen? What, what name? What parentage? Of Messalina. Sebastian was my father, such as Sebastian was my brother too. So went he suited to his watery tomb. For him I imitate. Oh, if it proved true, <coughs> tempests are kind and salt waves fresh in love. Were you a woman as the rest goes, even I should my tears let fall upon thy cheek and say, thrice welcome, drowned Viola. My father had a mole upon his brow. And so had mine. And died that day that Viola from her birth had numbered thirteen years. Oh, that record is lively in my soul. He finished it indeed his mortal act that day that made my sister thirteen years. If nothing less to make us happy both with this, my masculine user of attire, do not embrace me till each circumstance of place, time, fortune do cohere and jump that I am Viola. Which to confirm, I'll bring you to a captain in this town where lie my maiden weed, by whose gentle help I was preserved to serve this noble count. All the occurrence of my fortune since hath been between this lady and this lord. So comes it, lady. You have been mistook. But nature to her bias drew in that. You would have been contracted to a maid. Be not amazed. Right noble is his blood. And if this be so, as yet the glass seems true, I shall have share in this most happy rack. <laughs> Boy, thou hast said a thousand times thou shouldst never love a woman like to me. And all those sayings will I overswear. And all those swearings keep us true in soul, as doth that orbit continent, the fire that severs day from night. Then I take my hand, and let me see thee in thy woman's weeds. The captain that did bring me first on shore hath my maid's garments. He is now upon some action endurance at Malvolio's suit, a gentleman and follower of my lady. He shall march him. Fetch Malvolio hither. Now I do remember me. They say, poor fool, he's much distract. Most extracting frenzy of mine own, for my remembrance clearly vanished in. How does thee, Sarah? Well, madam, he holds Beelzebub at stain's end, as well as any in his case may do, as here writ a letter for you. I should have given it you today morning, but as a madman's epistles are no gospels, it skills not much when they are delivered. Open it and read it. Oh, then prepare to be well edified when the fool delivers the madman. By the Lord's madam! How now? Art thou mad? No, I do but read, madam. <laughs> <laughs> and your lady will have it as it ought. You must allow Vox. Prithee, read in thy right wit. Oh, I do read in mine, but to read in his is to read thus. Therefore, perpend, my princess, and give ear. Oh, read it to you, Fabian. Oh. By the Lord, madam, you wrong me, and the world shall know it. Though ye have put me into darkness, and given your drunken cousin rule over me, yet have I the benefit of my senses as well as your ladyship. I have your own letter that induced me to the semblance I put on, with the which I doubt not but to do myself much right, nor you much shame. Think of me as you please. I leave my duty a little unthought of and speak out of my injury. The madly used Malvolio. Did he write this? Aye, madam. The saber's not much of distraction. Uh, see him deliver. Fabian, bring him hither. <laughs> my lord, so please you, these things further thought on, to think me as well a sister as a wife. One day shall crown the lion's on it, so please you, here at my house and at my proper cost. Madam, I am most apt to embrace your offer. Your master quits you, and for your service done him, so much against the mettle of your sex, so far beneath your soft and tender breeding, 
And since you called me master for so long, here's my hand. You shall from this time be your master's mistress. Yes, sister, you are she. Is this the madman? Aye, my lord, this same. <laughs> How now, Malvolio? Madam, you have done me wrong, notoriously wrong. Oh, by Malvolio, no. Lady, you have, pray you, peruse this letter. Read. You cannot tell me now it is not your hand. Write from it if you can, in hand or phrase. Or say it is not your seal, not your invention. You can say none of this. Well, grant it then. And, and tell me, in the modesty of nature, why you have given me such clear lights of approval to, 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 to come cross garden <laughs> smiling. To, to wear yellow stockings and to frown upon Sir Toby and the light of people. Tell me why. Alas, Malvolio, this is not my writing. Though I confess much like the character, but out of question tis Mariah's hand. Yeah. And now I do bethink me, it was she who first told me thou wast mad, then camest in smiling, and in such forms as here were presupposed upon thee in the letter. Prithee, be content. This practice hath most shrewdly passed upon thee. But when we know the grounds and authors of it, thou shalt be both the plaintiff and the judge of thine own cause. Oh, good madam, hear me speak, and let no quarrel nor no brawls come taint the present condition of this hour in which I have wondered at. And helped it shall not, most freely I confess, myself and Sir Toby put this device against Malvolio here upon some stubborn and uncourteous parts we had conceived against him. Mariah writ the letter at Sir Toby's great importance, in recompense whereof he hath married her. Hey! How, with a sportful malice, it was followed, may be rather pluck on laughter than revenge, if that the injuries that have on both sides passed be justly weighed. Alas, poor fool, how have they baffled thee? Well. Some are born great, some achieve greatness, and some have greatness thrust upon them. I was one, sir, one Sir Topus in this interlude, but that's all one. Oh, by the Lord, I am not mad, fool. But do you remember? Why laugh you, madam, at such a barren rascal? And you smile not, she gag. And thus the whirling gig of time brings in his revenges. I will be revenged of the whole lot of you. He hath been most notoriously abused. First to him, and treat him to a peace. Meantime, sweet sister, we shall not part from hence. Cesario, come. For so you shall be while you are a man, but when in other habits you are seen, Orsino's mistress and his fancy's queen. When that I was and a little tiny boy, with a hey-ho, the wind and the rain, a foolish thing was but a toy, for the rain it raineth every day. With a hey-ho, the wind and the rain, for the rain it raineth every day. But when I came to man's estate, with a hey-ho, the wind and the rain, it's day and these men shut their gate for the rain it rain and every day with a hey ho the wind and the rain for the rain it rain and every day but when i came a last to wipe with a hey ho the wind and the rain by swaggering Bed 
Hey, oh, the wind and the rain. Both trunks, both steel, had drunken heads. Oh, the rain is raining every day. With a hey, ho, the wind and the rain. For the rain is raining every day. A great while ago, the world begun. With a hey, ho, the wind and the rain. But that's all what our play is done And we'll strive to please you every So please do tell friends, friends, family, everybody to come and see us. Uh, now this is the 21st year that the Curtain Theater has been doing free Shakespeare and some other plays here in this wonderful park. Uh, but we do it for free, but we obviously have costs for sets, for props, for costumes and other things. So when I'm finished gaveling on, you're going to see cast members with masks on and with baskets. Please, please help us. We take checks, cash, gold bars, apple stock, salmon colored stockings, uh, honey wagons, honey, anything you can give us, we would be delighted. And on that note, ladies and gentlemen, we bid you adieu. Oh.